I want to share the following words with you that were once said of my work, and I quote, Your paintings are like little vacations to gaze upon. These beautiful words stayed on my mind for days as I tried to understand what it was about my paintings that could evoke that kind of emotional response in a person. It soon became clear to me that it was how I use color to describe the degree of love I have for the subjects I choose to paint. Color is one of the most powerful ways an artist can communicate. And once you tap into that concept and begin to understand it, it can become the path to your own unique signature style. I invite you to continue with me now as I demonstrate how I use my new Mother Green Da Vinci palette. The question I often get from my students is how to achieve the fresh, transparent color and the beautiful organic greens found in my landscape paintings. My answer to this question is always the same, Da Vinci paint. I want my paintings to reflect the degree of love I feel for my subjects and the extreme pigment load and purity of Da Vinci paint allows me to better express these feelings. I started using this lovely paint early on in my career after experimenting with many other brands. From the first stroke of Da Vinci paint, I brushed across bright white watercolor paper. I was in love with the vibrancy I was able to achieve, and in all the years since, I have never found an artist quality paint more moderately priced or one that pleased me so much. I am happy to finally be able to share with you a project and collaboration that I have been working on these past few months with Marcello, a third generation paint maker and the USA based owner of the Da Vinci Paint Company. You can only imagine how thrilled and excited I was when he first contacted me with his ideas. Marcello has recreated for me the recipe I developed for mixing the variety of color found in the landscape. I call this special mix Mother Green because all the wonderful, beautiful, warm and cool greens found in my paintings originate from this unique blended color. But Marcello took it a step further for me and he greatly simplified my process with this very special palette. He put everything an artist needs in order to create the same gorgeous color inside this convenient, sturdy, versatile palette. And it contains a double amount of my new Mother Green mixture, along with a color card, and 10 more of my favorite and most used colors. We call this new signature collection of color Joyce's Mother Green Da Vinci Palette. I cannot wait to share with you my unique mixing methods and how I use this awesome little palette. First, I'd like to introduce my mother color to you. It is the base from which many of the glowing colors seen in my paintings originate from. Let me show you how I use it. I have put out some of the mother color pigment and added a little water to it. Use the amount of water that you need to make it to the density that you want it. This has to do with value. If you want it very dark, of course you would want to have more pigment. If you want it lighter, add a little more water. I have about a 50-50 mix here. I'm going to demonstrate in this square how I apply this paint. Once I get it on and it's nice and wet, I'm going to be adding some manganese blue. So watch me do this. I'm going to get my brush completely full of paint. You don't want to have a, a half loaded brush. You want juicy strokes. And I'm going to make sure that I don't retouch these strokes when I lay, once I lay them down. The fewer the strokes, the bigger the brush, the better. This is a number 16 
brush, a Princeton synthetic sable brush. You see how wet that is. That is very important if you want the next color to blend and move through the surface of that paint. So you have to be quick. This is manganese blue. And now I'm going to lay in some of that manganese blue to show you how beautifully it will mix. Now we're just going to let that color move and spread throughout that wet layer of mother color. That is all there is to it. Lay down a wet wash of mother color and then add any of these colors that you want for a warm or cool passage. It is so important that you do not retouch these strokes as this paint is drying or you will disturb the beautiful effects that you will get with watercolor. We're going to repeat this technique now here in this first block and we'll do it again. Practice this at home until it feels familiar with you. Now just as few strokes as possible Now we're going to take the manganese blue again. I'll get a little bit more. You have to be quick with watercolor because it begins to dry and then you can't get the movement with this second color. So here we go. We're going to do the same thing that we did there. And now we're going to let that move and spread and float on this mother color. And so now we're going to lay this down as few strokes as possible. Just keep moving. Don't retouch what you've just put down. Now that's a little darker value. So you can adjust the value depending on what you need to create the work that you're doing. Now we're going to get the cobalt blue. And I want you to see the difference in these two cool colors. It gives a whole different effect. Now I've created cool passages of color here. Manganese blue, cobalt blue. This is perfect for distances that you want to create in your landscape paintings. Put the stroke down and leave it alone. Move to a, a, a dry area for your each stroke. Don't go back over the ones you've just, just completed. Now that's a beautiful wet surface and I'm going to drop in. I have to do it while it's wet like this. If it has begun to dry, it does not work. You'll find that out as you practice this technique. Now, here we have Viridian. A whole nother look. We'll put a little more pigment in it. And now we leave it alone and we let it move in its own way, in its own time, and begin to dry. If I wanted to drop another color into this passage, I would have to do it before it begins to dry. But we're going to stop with one color, Viridian Green, for now. These are each in the drying process. This one is still wet, so I have to really be careful not to retouch it now that it has begun to dry. These are in a, at a matte stage where there's no shine or glisten, but it is still wet. And if I touched it with some wet water or paint, I would instantly get a bloom. So you have to be careful. These colors that you get by using this technique of dropping in paint into a wet passage, this is called wet into wet. I start with dry paper. You can learn this technique and perfect it. We're going to use Prussian blue now and put that into the mother color. All of these blue uh, shades are so great for passages that you want to imply distance in. Okay. Nice. Uh, wet passage now and I can go ahead and lay in some of this Prussian blue. Look at that. Love, love, love these colors. You cannot get this combination by mixing it on your palette. 
only the da Vinci paints and the combination of a wet surface and putting colors together, they achieve a, their own unique magical look. We're going to begin now using some warm color that we'll be adding to the mother green. It is so important that you have a variety of warm and cool colors in your work because that's what will add the drama and the energy. Nice big strokes. Don't revisit them once you've put them down. So now we have the alizarin crimson that I have already put out on the palette. And we're going to fill up the brush with it and we're going to see how this will look when it is added to the mother green. Now, let's just leave that alone and let it do what it will do. It does it on its own without you having to brush or move it. When we add vibrant color over the green mother color, it will naturally and beautifully gray it down just a bit. Grays are so important in your work because they make the full-blown color even more vibrant. I like the way Marcello laid out this palette for me. We have all of the cool colors on one side, making it easy to automatically find the cool color that you need. And he's put all of the warm colors on this side so that I can immediately know where to find them. So here we go. I'll put this down and then I'm going to leave it alone with the exception of dropping in the color. So that's nice and wet now. And we'll pick up some of this permanent rose and make a small puddle here to demonstrate how it will look. So we'll lay that into the wet paint. For the sake of time, I went ahead and completed the next four squares of color. So I laid in my mother green and I came back with Hansa Yellow Light. It's a very lemony color. And then I did this the same way and came back into the wet paint with Hansa Yellow Deep. This is a passage of mother green that I added Quin Gold to. And this is a passage of Mother Green that I added Burnt Sienna to. It's really important that you understand the power of the temperature of your colors. So study in your time if you don't fully understand that. It's a concept that will add energy and drama to your painting. I think it's always a good idea to have a variety of painting techniques under your belt so that you can add as much interest as possible in your work. The other way that's fun to use these colors is to mix them directly in the palette instead of mixing them on the paper like we've done with this exercise. So let me show you what I mean. I've mixed up a four puddles of mother green. I'll get just a bit more here. And I'm going to now use this manganese blue and I'm going to mix it on the palette instead of on the paper. And I'm going to show you the color that we would get. It's very unique and beautiful in its own right. Here you go. Just one stroke of this color to show you. A beautiful gray green. Now we'll use the uh, cobalt blue and mix it directly on the palette so that you can see the difference. Isn't that beautiful? Now let's use some warm color and see what that might look like mixed directly on the palette. Let's use this lemony Hansa Yellow Light and mix it with the Mother Green. It's very, very bright, vibrant. Here you go. 
And now let's use the Hansa Yellow Deep mixed with the Mother Green right here on the palette. So you have these two options. And one last thing I'd like to show you. It's always good to have the contrast. My paintings usually go all the way from white to black and that contrast is what adds the energy to my work. So I want to show you how I mix black. They're very easy to mix. So I have the very dark Prussian blue here. That is always my base for a black because it is the very darkest pigment in this palette of color. So what I do is I get a little bit of that and then for a cool green, I might use this cobalt blue. A little more pigment to get it as dark as you want. So here is a beautiful cool black. Now for a warm black, I might use the same base. but I'll mix a warm color with it. And I'm going to choose from one of my darker warm colors. So I will use this Burnt Sienna. A little more dark Prussian blue. You can mix it uh, as dark as you want by just adding or subtracting pigment. So here we go with the warmer. And there you go. So you can go all the way from white in your work all the way to the black. I would also like to let you know that all of these colors are the same paint that comes from the tube. So they're refillable easily from this 15 mil tube or I'm understanding that there is even a smaller tube of this paint available that you can use if you want to try new colors and it's all very economically priced. In closing, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Marcello and his whole team for creating this awesome little palette and giving me a chance to share with you just how convenient it is now to mix beautiful color that literally glows. For those of you who are familiar with my work, you already know how much I love to paint scenes filled with sunshine, and I must admit that I sometimes find myself thinking of my new signature palette as sunshine in a box. I would also like to let you know that I have lots of new educational videos over on my website for those of you who would like to learn more about how I create works of art in watercolor. Finally, I want all of you to know that my heartfelt appreciation goes out to every one of you for your continued support of my work. And I absolutely know for sure that none of my many artful blessings would be so without you.